So we are working on graphing polynomial functions. There's quite a few steps involved in this whole process. In the last video, we learned the first step of finding the in behavior, meaning what's happening on the very left and what's happening on the very right of the graph. The next step of graphing polynomial function is to plot some points. And the most easiest point to plot is going to be your y-intercept. So that is the second step of graphing polynomial function. So you've actually found the y-intercept multiple times before. You found it when you are trying to graph linear equations. You found it when you are trying to graph quadratic equations. You found it when we were just introducing graphing in general, meaning finding the y-intercept by itself. So it's the same process from here on out. Your y-intercept is where it's going to intercept the y-axis. So to figure out where that happens, you let your x value be 0, and you substitute that into your function. So in this example, we need to figure out f of 0. So let me just go ahead and plug that in. That gives me negative 0 to the 4th plus 12 times 0 squared minus 27. Now, if your polynomial is an expanded or multiplied out form, such as this one here, you will always end up with your constant term, meaning the term that doesn't have any variables involved, because all the variables become zero, and those all cancel out. So my answer in this example is negative 27. Now, a y-intercept is an ordered pair that we can graph, so your final answer should be an ordered pair format. So in this example, our y-intercept is 0, negative 27. If I wanted to graph this, I would just plot that on my y-axis. So let me go by 5, negative 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So my y-intercept would go somewhere around here, which is a down approximately negative 27 units. So let's move on to a second example of this. I have another polynomial here. So again, I'm just going to let my x value be 0. Or since this function's name is g, I'm going to find g of 0. Now this one's going to be a little bit more work because it's in factored form rather than expanded form. But it's pretty much the same process. So instead of looking at my constant term, I'm going to look at my constant term of each piece because all of my variables are going to become 0. So if I look at my constant term of each piece, that gives me 1 9th times negative 1 times 4 times negative 5. So again, constant terms of each piece meaning the terms without any variables involved. So let me cancel out my double negatives here. Negative times negative is positive. 4 times 5 is 20, and then I need to divide that by 9. Now that does not come out even, so I'm going to leave it in the fraction format of 20 over 9. So my final answer here in ordered pair format is 0 and then 20 over 9. So if I needed to graph this, I would need to figure out what 20 over 9 is approximately. So I know it's about 2 and 2 ninths, or if you wanted to figure out the decimal approximation for that, that would be fine too. You are more than welcome to type that in your calculator. And that works out to be 2 repeating, so this is 2.2 repeating. So if I needed to graph this, I would go a little bit beyond 2 units here. So there would be my y-intercept for this specific example. Some notes to make about y-intercepts in general. You always find them by letting your x value be 0 or f of 0 if your given function name is f. When you do that, you're only ever going to get one y-intercept. You should never have more than one. Now, these are ordered pairs that intercept the y-axis, so they should always come in the format of 0 and your number. Now, if your polynomial comes in expanded form, like our first example, the number that you're going to get out is always your constant term. So that's maybe another note that you want to make here. 
this is going to be zero and then my constant term. If your polynomial is in factored format, like our second example, it's the same thing. We're just going to have to multiply the constant term from each factor. And that gives us our y-intercept. So that's the second step into graphing polynomials, is plotting points. And the easiest point that you'll ever plot is your y-intercept. So this is where I'm going to stop this video, and in the next video, I'm going to be talking about the next step of graphing polynomial functions.